Rebellions are built on hope. That's true. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Now the chat pop in and it went live. Everyone, welcome to a rogue tastic episode of Empire Radio. Mm-hmm. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew, and we are back. And you guessed it, we're back with more behind the scenes stuff. Yes, because <laughs> we we love doing that. Um, what are we gonna do when we run out of all of them? Um, well, hopefully we can make it to the Obi Wan Kenobi series, <laughs> and then and That's then we'll like figure, three weeks away. I think and then we we'll figure it. that out in we'll figure that out in July. Um, yeah, other stuff. But anyway, so we're doing the behind the scenes type of stuff for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Yes. And so we're actually going to be doing two weeks of this. Um, so they don't have deleted scenes or extended scenes on there, which is weird. Like, it's interesting maybe they don't have any. I wonder if there's any on the, the Blu ray. I have the Blu ray. I should go look. But, um, so do I. I should look too, actually. I think so there was. I'm not sure. But we're going to divide this up into two weeks worth. And so tonight we're going to be looking at more of like the like the making of type of uh, special features that they have. And then the next time, part two will be about the characters that they have. So they have like different kinds of stuff. So we're mm-hmm. splitting it up. Um, and we're not sure when part two exactly is going to be done because... Next week is uh, Star Wars Day on the Wednesday, and we record on the Tuesday the 3rd, but we're hoping that the podcast recording that Drew, Andrew, and Tanner is joining you, right? Uh, I don't know. He's just going to film us and okay. do some behind Well, either way, stuff. Drew and Andrew are going to be recording live at ICCCCon this weekend. Mm-hmm. and Nashville. And so that is recorded by the con itself, right? Correct. Yep. And then we're hoping we can get the audio and video from that by Star Wars Day the 4th so we can have mm-hmm. that as our episode for that week. Um, and I guess we'll have to discuss with Drew if we want to do voicemails just on Tuesday night only and just have Ooh. that, and I can add it on. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, but, and- the biggest thing is that this podcast will be a li- live on Saturday. What is the date on that? The 30th, right? 30th, yeah. The 30th at 3.30 will be going live p.m. 3.30 p.m. Eastern what, time? East, whatever. Or is, What's Nashville what, time? What is Nashville time? You don't even know, do you? Chat, help us all. I have no idea. <laughs> That's like right on the line. It's like half the state is probably is it us or is it there? <laughs> I don't know, but it's whatever the local time in Memphis and, yeah. is. Um, and so hopefully we can have that for Star Wars Day as our podcast episode, yes. um, which may or may not have voicemails, but we'll, we'll figure that out. If not, if anything, we might even – do a double t- episode but we do encourage you guys to go watch it live on that saturday on iccc network on their y- youtube and their uh, facebook page it should be going live at the start we would love to know that you guys are supporting us because this is kind of like a big deal i would say like like uh, a lot well, of how many other... subscribers do they have on their youtube channel that's the question uh, i don't know are if they have a lot getting... but I, I mean, I hope so, but I think the biggest thing is, like, I think right – either right after or right before us, Rebel Force Radio is going to be doing a live podcast then – or there as well. So if – Like if just the before Empire, you guys? 
It's either right before or right after. I don't remember. Dude, like, our name, Empire Radio, is purposely in contrast with Rebel Force Radio. Yeah, like, don't say that too loud because they might sue us or no, something. No, <laughs> we're coming after you, Rebel Force Radio. <laughs> but I want to know that our fans showed out a lot more than theirs. So that is my call to action to you guys. Like, help the Empire live strong, even though they're, we're facing the Rebels atten- potentially this weekend so come on help us out but, but, but here's the thing if you do meet them oh no i'll be see, I'm, see, I'm see gonna... if you can get us a shout out on the yeah, show yeah. No, but anyway a no, girl um... out <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. okay anyway back to what i was trying to say uh we don't know exactly what our star wars day like podcast is going to be if we can't have that recording by that wednesday Mm-hmm. Then we'll probably just record part two of Rogue One stuff uh, next Tuesday, the third. Yeah. Um, if we do get that, uh, then we'll delay part two to the tenth. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are kind of hoping that we get something released on Star Wars Day, like a trailer or something, and then we'll cover that on the tenth, and then we do part two of Rogue One yeah. on the seventeenth. So we don't really know exactly what our schedule is going to be, um, but ideally. We'll have that special recording for you next week. Fingers crossed. Force, hopefully, the force wills it. But yes, just keep the, your eye on that. And then we're getting pretty close to Obi Wan. So then we still don't know exactly if it's on Fridays every week or Wednesdays. We think it's just the, that first Friday, and then Wednesdays after that. So we don't know yet. But yeah, it's all up. In That's the what Wikipedia, Wikipedia says, but they could have maybe not update. I don't know. Who knows? Either way, we're excited for that. But also, Jeremiah, what are you doing on May 4th? Because we potentially not might not talk to each other until after May 4th. So that's just – what are you uh, going to do? Uh, There's got to be some Star Wars celebration uh, involved. Like you can't just like dish I'm, the holiday. I was going to probably go to a grocery store. Okay. Um, well, here we go. <laughs> uh, Wednesday, Wednesday nights I have Bible study. So I go to that. So, You're not gonna I, like watch a New Hope in the background, <laughs> the last half no, during your Bible study. No. no so you're I not gonna know. watch any Star Wars at all. I don't know. On May maybe, 4th. maybe I don't know. We'll see, I gotta see how it I goes. actually have to work. And I think. May- oh, and was it May Fourth? Is the last episode of Moon Knight? I think. Dude, I'm so behind, but yeah. Bruh. It's a pretty good show. I, I'm like I watched the maybe the first two episodes. Yeah, I watched the first two episodes, and then I haven't watched any since. Actually, I think I've only watched the first episode. I lied, and I haven't watched any since. Well, not that, not to say that it's not good. Like the first episode kind of blew me away, and I have a lot more respect for um, said actor. Um, dude, he's so good. But anyway, but, when we start yeah. our MCU podcast someday, we'll talk about it later. But. I think that's going to be a Patreon podcast, and they're going to have to pay for that. But, you know. Yep. If you want us to do that, you, you got to pay us to do it. <laughs> also, just comment down below on this YouTube video if you guys want us to do something like that for a Patreon. Um, yes. We have some thoughts of brewing, so let us know in the comments. And if you guys say it in the, the chat right now live, I'm not going to read it, so you still have to go to the YouTube video and comment. <laughs> All right. Well, that's all the kind of like news stuff that we're just going to get out of the way. So yeah, we're we going to blow little... over the fact that Jeremiah didn't ask me what I'm doing May 4th. But anyways, yeah, let's go into this episode. You do the same thing every May 4th. What am I doing? You watch the movies. I don't need to ask you if I already know well, the answer. I... <laughs> I mean, I think we're doing like a podcast episode where we like talk and people want to know. Okay. No, uh, I actually had to work that night because... I am not working that day because I have to watch my kid, but I will be watching for sure Rogue One after watching all these scenes and stuff like I that. Know, it got me hyped. I got it. I got chills again about this movie, and I'm like, oh, one, why did the director not do all the other Star Wars movies? Like, let's talk about that. And two, did you? Ryan Johnson finally did something good in this too. We can talk about that a little bit. Well, I'm gonna go each episode but, by episode. Yes, so. I'm I'm excited to break this down. Actually, this I I love right. Rogue One. So the first uh, one that we're gonna go over is called a Rogue Idea. 
And so all these little these documentary things are anywhere from like four to eight minutes long. And so mm-hmm. uh, they're very quick and to the point about certain different topics of making this film. So And, and we're not going to go in order on Disney Plus, just so you guys know. Yeah, I kind of... Jeremiah jumped around a little bit. A little bit. Um, but yes, uh, a rogue idea was the first one. It's kind of like how they came up with the idea. And so... Mm-hmm. I kind of heard about this story a little bit, but I didn't realize that it was John Knoll who... Yeah, I had no idea. So John Knoll works at ILM, and he's been there forever. But here's the thing. I he, Since what, he was 15? Yes, he started working on models, learning how to do models when he was 15, like right after... A New Hope. A right? New Hope or something like that. But... so. John Knoll is one of the main guys at ILM, which is a visual effects uh, studio, one of the biggest in the world. Um, and, okay, I'm going to say it again. Andrew and I always talk about Corridor Crew, which talks, breaks down VFX stuff. Mm-hmm. And John Knoll has been on that show a few times. They had him on as a mm-hmm. guest for him to talk through some of the projects that he's worked on and how they did certain visual effects and whatnot. And so, like... I didn't realize it was him that pitched the idea of this movie that he had ever since he was a kid, basically. So, like, that was cool because, like, you think think of, like, oh, is this some executive or some someone like J.J. Abrams or something, like, that's been involved with Disney or something? And, like, okay, I had this idea, and then they listened to that. But this is a, a visual effects guy that had the idea and contacted Kathleen Kennedy about the idea and it was just like a one page breakdown and it snowballed into this idea that eventually became what is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. So Whoa. What do you mean whoa? I, I just, we did movie rankings on I this. I know We've but been still, over this. it still blows my mind. It's all it's it's up there with episode three. It goes back and forth for me so maybe i'll watch both those movies on star wars day but watch them in order three rogue one there you go yep and so they started coming up right away they started coming up with concept art and drawings uh him and doug chang who's also Mm -hmm. a major player in visual effects and storytelling and all that stuff and so he they just started coming up with drawings and stuff. So before they even made a script and storyboard and all this stuff, they already had stuff ready to go. Um, yeah, because Doug heard about like that they kind of green it essentially, but they didn't really have anything written down. And then he just wanted to start drawing like literally right away as soon as he heard it. Yeah, so Which, this... if you guys don't know, he does majority of all those uh, art at the end of all the Mando and Boba Fett shows. He does? I think he does a lot of them. He for sure did the one with the spider. Because if you remember that breakdown episode, he was saying that he pulled that directly from Ralph McQuarrie. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember. So I, I think he – I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's done like He's a definitely involved in the process of making yes. the concept art. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah. So they had all these concept arts. And then they – uh, we're coming up, and I was kind of like confused on why they specifically chose Gareth Edwards, but like they said, they went and saw, watched his movie Monsters. Yes. Um, so, is that the one that like takes place in Mexico, and it's like these two people trekking across the country or something? I have no idea, but I want to watch it now because I think I think that's something like like these um, some meteors like hit Earth and had like alien species in it like in Mexico and they just kind of like overtook Mexico and like just these giant monsters and stuff. And so like it's stories about like these group of people trying to cross from South America into the United States or something like that. Mm. I, I remember watching, I think that's the, that's the one, but You've seen it before. Yeah. But I, I think that's the one I'm remembering. I'm not sure. And I don't remember much from it other than there's some monsters, <laughs> but um, so they liked what he did with that movie and approached him to do this movie. So that's kind of like the story. We didn't really get a lot of information on that, but, um, something I, I really liked was that 
they wanted to portray with like all the characters that they had, whether it's like Saw Gerrera's group or just the the Rogue One group itself, but they wanted a diversity of beings to be represented in the struggle against the Empire to to kind of illustrate that the Empire has taken over the entire galaxy and is oppressing everyone. And so um, I thought that was an interesting thing. Like, I didn't even, I was like, okay, Star Wars, there's aliens and like different species, but like they're very purposeful in like having an extra wide range of characters so that it kind of painted a picture of more people and more species are affected by the empire mm-hmm. than we realize. Cause then, you know, we get to a new hope, like, yeah, we see in the cantina, all these aliens, but from that point on, like Chewbacca is like the only non-human yeah. we see for the second half of that movie. So like, it was just interesting that they did it that way. And they wanted to make the story about the people's struggle against the empire and not yeah. just kind of like a story that takes place in the Star Wars universe. I don't know. It's kind of like they're very intentional and we'll see with some of the other things that they did too, but they're very intentional about how they wanted to tell the story from how a certain angle. Mm-hmm. I thought that was just interesting. Cause like watching all these little documentaries, it just like made me love the movie more. Kind of like you were saying, like you want to go watch it again. Yeah. Cause I don't want to like see all these different characters that they work on. And, and I didn't even realize before. So, well, and like, even there's certain p- parts of these things that we're breaking down is like, they'll like show like an image or like a concept and they'll like, go into that that actual scene in the movie and then even watching those like when they bumped into those two guys from a new hope right. doctor or whatever his name is and they bumped into him but they had the concept like design of that and then they actually sh- like went into like the pictures like even the way they did these documentary breakdowns were super well done but anyways like when i watched that i'm like oh dude i want to watch this movie so good like this movie is so good and i want to watch it so bad right now like, yeah, Definitely. I love this movie. Have we broke this movie down? We haven't broke it down any movie except for episode nine back on the old school, the Mandalorian oh. podcast. We should definitely break down it, row one for fun. We should probably do all the movies. For fun. We should do all of them. But now after watching this, I'm like, like last week, it kind of made me want to see Solo again. Right. But this really made me want to watch <laughs> Rogue One again. <laughs> so. Um, so that was a rogue idea, just kind of the start of how they wanted to put the movie together and what the idea came from. Um, well, but... it was really cool, too. The director, he he's like a huge Star Wars fan, and for his 30th birthday, he went to the... Um, Tunisia. The, yeah, the the homestead. I didn't even realize that was a place you could go. Yeah, I didn't know either, and I'm like, dude, I wish. And my like, 30th the birthday pictures now. from him there, it's like he's the only one there. It's like, yeah, it's like nobody go there. I'm like, uh, I know it's like, because Tunisia is like northern part of Africa, and it's like in the middle of the desert, so it's not like a tourist hot spot, but like, but come on. I'm just saying, Drew, if you and I want to go, bro, like, dude, to do a podcast episode off of the Lars Homestead, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd, that'd be probably fire. cost a lot of money. Too. It would be, <laughs> but it would be the best podcast episode of all time. <laughs> but yeah, so that was a rogue idea. The next one uh, is called Visions of Hope, and this is kind of like um, them talking about how they wanted to go about making the visual aspects of the movie. Um, just to kind of like the art direction of it. Mm-hmm. And so um, what they did specifically from the very start was they made sure they focused on the original Ralph McQuarrie art designs of things and mm-hmm. be inspired by that because obviously Rogue One is – takes place just before episode four. So you need there to be a very similar um, visual similarities where 
you know, like they kind of had this thing, like they, it was like, a, they wanted to make it new and fresh, but they didn't want it to be like so new that it didn't look like Sp Star Wars, but they didn't want to make it look exactly like a new hope. So therefore it's like, there's nothing new. So it's like kind of like the, a new ground, middle ground of new versus old, but they wanted to make sure they still based everything off the Ralph McQuarrie yeah. ideas. And I thought it was super interesting how with, you know, modern technology, they can make better props. Like mm -hmm. the, the main thing that they focused on was in the original trilogy, like the stormtroopers with their, like the vents on the sides of their helmets. That was just like a sticker. Yeah. But they are now able to make actual helmets with actual vent holes. Mm -hmm. And so the, like, apparently I didn't I have to go back and look, but like when you go and look at the original movies, you can see that there's no texture on the vents. And like, it's kind of like, if you pay attention, it's like, looks fake. Well, but, they're even saying at some, some angles you could potentially even see that they're a sticker. Yeah. Which and is so, I mean, not good. So it's interesting that, you know, to go back and look at those little details that like, you don't necessarily notice now that we have like HD and my 4k versions of, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have 4K of the original trilogy yet. Yeah, they do. Is it out? Yeah, remember you can buy that whole. I think you can buy them all together, all the like one through nine, and it's like a Death Star. It's like a all Blu-ray. Well, but is Blu-ray isn't 4K though? That's true. I don't know. I think it's in 4K. Either way, it's like a thousand dollars for that box set. What? Yeah, dude, it's so expensive. Or it's like 700 bucks. What? Yeah, dude. Okay, well. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just Maybe it's like wrong. 200 bucks. I should look it up. <laughs> probably like 200 bucks, but. Um, Either way, I, re I wanted it, and then I saw the price, and I was like, yeah, no. Right. I know I have them all on Blu-ray. Yeah, so I really like this. So, like, they were looking at, like, the original models of things um, and kind of mimicking those visuals. And, like, you know, that's one of the hardest things to do is capture the Star Wars, like, I don't know how you say, like, the persona of Star Wars, like, what it actually looks like because mm -hmm. there's a million space movies and shows and stuff, and everyone kind of looks the same it says futuristic alien space stuff and it's whatever but like star wars always looks different than everything else and it's like it's hard to explain why and it's like when fans make fan films like a lot of times it's like it doesn't really look star wars like it doesn't like the clothes the costumes don't look unless it's like a jedi robe which you can just buy or something like those are easy to do but I don't know, a lot of things that take me out of, like, some fan films is because, like, the clothes don't look right or, like, the props yeah. don't look right. And it's like, how do you capture that? And so, um, it's interesting that, you know, you got to be very careful on how you do the visual things. And so that's why they went back to the Ralph McQuarrie concept arts and drawings and ideas so that they could more closely copy that same, like inspiration that the original movies had so yeah I, I gotta get like a book of like all the concept art of ralph mccory stuff like do they, they probably have that don't they yeah it's like a visual guide for ralph mccory yeah that'd be cool stuff like, they do have like you can buy all the like concept art of like both seasons of mandalorian yeah i've seen that and and stuff like that um like i've never like really took the time to look at all the ralph mccory stuff i've seen like you know some of Concept stuff like original designs of characters yeah. like C three PO and R two and Chewie like, and like Chewbacca's original Ralph McCoy design is actually what Zeb in Rebels is yeah it's is this one. actually so um it's this one right here right there there it is if you can't see it, it's because you're not watching us on our YouTube True. version so subscribe to us on YouTube. <laughs> Star Wars Celebration exclusive 2020 that I didn't exist. Well, yeah. sorry, folks. <laughs> um, but yes. So, yeah. Uh, 
back to that box set, it is 188 on Amazon right now. But it's weird because it says Blu-ray, but then it says 4K. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some of them are in lower quality than like the newer the, ones. The original trilogy is probably just HD. HD, but the other everything else is in 4K probably. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it was cool to see like um how how the director was talking about how you can only you're you're in this fine line with making a Star Wars film where he was saying like you can if you go too far to the left, you're going to you can make the characters stand out to the point where they don't really fit the universe or you can go too far to the right where they're so plain that they don't have any characteristics that make you feel like you're watching a different movie than the normal ones and so he was saying like that fine line was really it was really difficult to find these characters and make them feel like you're watching a new star wars but also felt like they fed in the exact same universe and i think rogue one did a really good job about that because of how this movie ends the exact point where a new hope starts and they did a really good job at like making it feel new, but also making it feel like it fit completely by adding like the the uh, dark troopers or the death troopers and like adding certain aspects to them or adding a more like aliens and stuff like that, but still making it feel like you're watching a Star Wars film completely. And I thought it was really it was really really well done. I thought it was really good. And you know what? Also, watching these again made me really want to watch this this new show that's about to come out, the Cassie Andor show. Oh, like yeah, this really made me want to watch it. That's the first time you actually wanted this series. Cause you've been true because I've been not... like kind of like, eh, it's whatever. Apparently, was, someone posted a rumor in the Discord that the show, the Andor show, was originally supposed to be five seasons long, and they just what cut it back to three seasons but it's still gonna be three seasons three seasons i thought this was like a kenobi thing like six episodes and done or like a boba fett kind of no it's like, like 12 episodes of season one and they've already announced like six months ago that they are doing season two well i'm ready you better be that's ready pretty expensive it is do you see what the stranger things season four per episode cost is was thirty one million or something? Thirty million dollars an episode. Yeah, thirty million an episode. That's so expensive, dude. Like, and if any of them are trash, I'm gonna be mad. Oh, whatever. Straight up, you wasted thirty. You're gonna pull the what's a filler episode nonsense. <laughs> no, there's only no. I love Stranger Things. I just think I I've. It's my favorite I've, show of all. Time. I've like waited too long. But it's I'm gonna just be that annoyed. Good. Like that trailer. You watch the I mean, trailer. Yeah, the check tra- it out I mean, on YouTube. We did yeah. our first non Star Wars thing Correct. on our YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. But, um, yes, super expensive. And so, Cassie and Andor show, like, because I think it's 12 episodes is the first season. So, so, like. Is that supposed to come out before season three of Mando? Yeah, Andor is supposed to come out this year. It's what? a good thing we're going to break down in Rogue One episode, huh? Yeah, so I think so. We're supposed to get Bad Batch season two and casting Andor this year, and I think it's going to be quite a while before we get Mando season three. Like that's yeah, I don't. That's going to be like another. That's probably not going to be till fall of next year, fall mm-hmm. or winter of next year. So, what about Soka? That's going to be sometime next year too. So. I don't. Uh, get, this has nothing to do with what we're breaking down or anything. But I have this weird underlining feeling that they're gonna cancel that show. Is that Why? weird? It's, I don't it's know. All, they just cast pe- announced a casting of someone. Well, I'm not saying that they're not doing it. I just have this weird feeling. Why would they cancel it? It's the most. I one, don't it's know. One of the biggest thing. <laughs> I'm just scared. They are just it. really scared. <laughs> you need to get you a prescription for something to get your anxiety down. Cause... For real, I'm like. I want this show so bad, and I want Thrawn so bad, and it's just like, uh, yeah. Okay. So that was Visions of Hope. Uh, next one is called Digital Storytelling. 
Um, and so this one is kind of like um, very much like focusing on how kind of like, okay, we know about the volume that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Mandalorian and Boba Fett have been filmed in. So it's a big kind of like LED screen room that they can like project the images on so that the actors and actresses can actually see the environment that they're in better than this uh, blue screen or green screen. And so this is kind of like, so this was obviously filmed long before that was ever fully made because uh, Rogue One came out in 2016. So this is probably filmed in 2014 and 15, somewhere in there. Yeah. And so they didn't have the volume yet. And so oh, John this Perro is, is still filming Lion King. Right. <laughs> and so this was kind of like them doing similar things where rather than it's not the whole volume room, mm -hmm. um, but they had um, like, like the scene on the, the planet Edu, like where they have the Imperial facility where they mm -hmm. Galen dies. RMP. Galen Urso is fine. It's like raining and stuff. So it's like, they kind of like built that entire area and you could mm -hmm. like go on with like a i don't know what they had like, a vr I, essentially kind of, like a, kind of? like a vr thing but it was on like a tablet and like yeah. you could actually go around in that space and kind of look with the movement of the tablet and so they wanted to do that because they really liked how gareth edwards when filming like he would take the camera and film it like shoot it himself because he knew exactly the angle and movement of the camera that he wanted, that he couldn't necessarily just tell a camera guy to do. Well, and you can't really, and, it's hard to tell those angles to some of the stuff is like CGI. Like, I don't know, like there's only certain ways you can get certain angles and they felt like he was the best way to do it. And there was, they were able to make it so that he was able to do it. I don't, it's kind of hard to explain. So, Blame, so they but... used it so he was able to move around in that 3D space in a sense yeah. so that he could find angles mm -hmm. that worked best rather than kind of telling, you know, the visual effects crew to like, oh, yeah, kind of down in this gully, look up. Like, yeah, you know, he, he could actually grab it himself. So, you know, I want you to stand right here like you're standing right here with the camera going up into this angle or something. And so... That was kind of like part of like the volume where it's not like you're you're in the environment and you can act mm -hmm. better. And so he's kind of like filming in a 3D space to kind of like better explain to the visual effects crew how to make a scene. Yeah. Um, and then the other scene that they did was when the Star Destroyer came out of the shadow and then they're putting the cap on the Death Star and like that whole saddle that shadow scene where you thought the Star Wars Destroyer was massive and then you look behind it and the Death Star was behind it was way bigger. And, like, so that whole shot was... Well, I think it was said, like, that was on accident. Yeah, it was, like, an accident. Like Because, like, they had it. the Star Destroyer in that 3D space and when the dish was being dropped, like, just the lighting technology did that to the, like, something in that scene. Mm-hmm. And so, like, oh, we got to, like, actually make this now because that's, like, exactly what would happen. So I'm pretty sure that that uh, Star Destroyer that comes out of the shadow is, like, an actual model, physical model. Yeah, that they that's made. what it looks like. And so, like, they just took what they took from the, the, the 3D space experimenting and they just accidentally discovered that and, like, hey, we're just going to recreate that because that's what actually happened in this environment. So that's really interesting that that was just kind of, like, uh, a byproduct of like these kind of like new concepts of using 3D space to film things. And so, um, and then there was another thing where like they had like, it was kind of like the volume, but it was kind of like just like a big giant like movie theater screen type thing, but like mm. kind of more curved. And like they would film with, you know, the scene kind of on the screen. And so there's the interactive lighting on the actors of like when there's an explosion, it would flash on the screen, but then the light would be so bright and big that it would go on the, the environment or the characters or whatever. So it's kind of like the ship that they're flying, like it would actually shine on it. So that it looked yeah. like, like pretty much what the volume does. Like the whole yeah. concept of the volume is that it creates actual real lighting 
and background to a smaller stage and but still have the same effect that you're in this giant universe or this giant place and it honestly like it costs a lot of front but then you don't have to travel to three different countries like rogue one they still have to travel to three different countries to film this and they had like three massive sets and like stuff like that like they cut a lot of that budget with like the volume but this is like the beginning of the volume like literally you're watching this and you're realizing oh this is the volume at its the smallest form and what they make with the volume is like they probably used a lot of this technology and they just ran with it and they made the volume so much better right and i'm not sure maybe it was in the digital storytelling segment or maybe it was something else but like they had to when they recreated the Yavin base, mm-hmm. like they actually made a set. The, the front of it was never a set, like in the original movies. It was just mm-hmm. a picture, a painting, mm-hmm. and so they had to like take the painting and like actually turn it into a physical set type of thing, which is mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, to, like, I don't think that's in this one. I, can't, I can't remember which one it was in. It might have been in Visions of Hope, maybe. I can't yeah, remember. I think I think but it is. I thought it was cool that it had to like recreate something that never existed before that but, but we're like, familiar with. The, so what is this thing called a U wing? They had seven hundred and eighty one different versions of the U wing before they actually picked the version that they used in the right. Rogue One. I'm like, this guy drew it. It's like so. Then some of them were like really crazy, like drawings, and other than yeah, just kind of yeah, like yeah. they look similar to the ones one that we got. But it's like mm-hmm. creating. I don't know. I feel like this is like extensive. <laughs> Seven hundred eighty one. Yeah, versions. but dude, you know that they this guy does that all the time. What's that guy's name? I know, Asian but guy? like Doug Chang. Doug, yeah, dude, that boy's a he's a beast. He's the goat, dude. Like but he just like, probably sits there at home. Oh, let me just try this version. But of like, it. I wonder mm-hmm. how many. Of them were like drastically different. Like I feel like. Oh yeah, no. There's probably like. I bet like. Wh- yeah. Six hundred of them are like fairly similar. They just kind of like mm-hmm. changed some angles on this one from that one and stuff. But I don't know. The U wing is one of the uh, few new ships from Rogue One. The U wing, and then you have like the the Tide Reaper. I think it's kind of like that. More of like a a triangle. Thing. I don't know. It's kind of mm. hard to explain. I don't know how to explain it, but they had a couple different new ships in there, and so the Ewing was one that kind of spent the most time on just because um, it was like the primary new ship that the Rebels were Well, and it's using. a big deal to create a new Rebel ship in this universe that has been developed, you know, but make it also fit. It's crazy when you think of it like that. Yeah. But I also, I, I like, like, the the end part of this episode or this uh, little short thing was talking about the explosion from the Death Star and how do you create a explosion from the Death Star by seeing it on the planet that was exploding, like exploding. Yeah. Is that the right? Yeah, that's right. Sure. So, cause most like when we saw the Death Star blow up, uh, what's that planet? Why am I blinking? Uh, uh, I was gonna say Naboo. No, it's um, not Naboo. Oh my gosh, uh, Jetta. <laughs> yes. No, no, not Jetta. The the one in A New Hope. Not Jetta. Oh, Alderaan. Alderaan. Why? Yeah. You're thinking of all the wrong places. <laughs> all the wrong places, but Alderaan. Yeah. Uh, when we saw that blow up, we just saw a planet blow up. You know, like we didn't actually see it up close. It was really far away. And, and this is like you're they're on this planet and they have to escape why it literally just got the biggest nuke of all time hit it essentially a lot bigger than a nuke <laughs> yeah but like like at the end of that scene when it's like all the stuff is kind of falling past them and over them mm-hmm. like, a, like a wave a wave like that's yeah. a, from a concept art that one of the people just kind of randomly drew mm-hmm. about it looking like a wave that's arcing over the ship escaping Mm -hmm. and they're like that's it and they kind of modeled everything off of just that one concept art of making uh that kind of come to life and so like 
eventually, like, at the very end, just before they hit hyperspeed to get out of there, mm-hmm. like, it's, like, way, the wave is way over them. Like, it's, like, miles oh, past Oh, yeah, them, no, it's, like, it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and, like, when you watch the film, you're like, oh, this is a really cool scene. But then you're also in the moment of the, the how are they going to escape, you know? Like, right. you're not in that moment of, like, breaking down the wave of debris, especially if you're just watching it, like, casually. But then, like, when I re, like, when I watch, like, the breakdown how they actually did it, I'm like, oh, wow, this is really, this took a lot more effort than I gave it credit for. And in, in the sense of like, yeah, this is really sick, and like the wave is amazing. I don't know. I thought it was really cool design, and so. Yep. Yep. All right. So that was digital storytelling. Next one, uh, the Empire, and so this was just more about um, focusing on creating a. Uh, a villain in a sense of what not just like the empire in general like they're fighting against the empire but a believable villain that the audience can be engaged with because they made the point like you can't have vader as the primary villain because there's no stakes because we know that obviously he doesn't die like so like makes sense but like when you introduce a new villain, that's the primary villain in a director Krennic. Like you don't know is he gonna die? What's his future? Like is he gonna be technically around in the other movies? Like we don't know his story, so it's like we're drawn into his story because we don't know what his fate is. And that's mm-hmm. the same with you know anything with making movies that are kind of like a a prequel or something or just like a cinematic universe of some sort like you need to make sure that the characters have stakes where you don't know their future because the moment you know their yeah. future from a previous work then it's like you don't care so it's kind of like spoilers for rebels so retta from discord who's watching rebels for the first time you might want to skip ahead 30 seconds but like or more, or more. um but like in rebels like we don't know about them who like, who survives or who dies or something because but we just all we know from Rogue One is that General Sindula is the only one that survives because we hear that in, in there. But yeah. like also for like the Kenobi series, Rebels, there's two Inquisitors from Rebels mm-hmm. that are in the Kenobi series. So we know those two ones are not gonna die in the show. Correct. So it's like you don't have the stakes because like, so that's what you want with you want stakes so that's that's the hard thing about like making prequels and bigger stories based on other characters is you don't know you don't want to make it predictable mm-hmm. it's like in kenobi we know vader and obi-wan don't die <laughs> so it's like we're not we're not worried about them at all in either yeah. the show so it's like you have to make a story that we can still be invested in where you still, what happens still matters to the bigger story. And so. you can come back and listen. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think, I think that is one thing I'm kind of worried about the Kenobi story is because what are the stakes? We know the person that Kenobi is protecting isn't going to die. We know. Kenobi is not going to die. So what kind of stakes do we have? But I think the biggest thing about it is like we do want to see Kenobi interact with Vader. And we hope that we see that. So like I guess there is there's some things but there's certain characters that we're like well we know like their outcome. So there's not a lot of stakes. And I think that's what a lot of people do enjoy about Mando is like, we don't know his outcome at all. Right. He's a character in a universe that we're familiar with. We might see characters that we know like Luke or spoilers. If you guys haven't seen the Mandalorian, um, I don't, sorry, but like, we know he, there's certain characters that he interacts with that. We do know the outcome, but the, as a main character, him and Grogu, we don't know their outcome. 
And so like, that's why it is really cool. And we're able to engage in these characters, but then there's certain character, like there's certain shows that they're going to do. Like for instance, like casting the Andor show, we actually know his outcome. You know? Yeah, so it's like we know that he's not going to die in that show. Yeah, we know he's not going to die in the show, but then we again... We know that there's probably tons of characters in the show that are going to die. Yeah, for sure. And so it's like R.I.P. all this long list of rebels from... Yeah, the so I have a question, Jeremiah. Yeah. Does this make you not... Because, like, let's say, like, he has, like, a weird love interest that most likely ends up dying at some point. Um are we going to have as much investment into her as a character or them as a character? Because we know that they're not going to be there at the end. Or does that actually matter to you? Well, any new character we get, we don't know if they live or die. Correct. So it's like, that's true. I guess. Every new character I'm going to be invested in and care mm-hmm. about or, but we just or, know that we're not going to – that he doesn't interact with them after a certain point. Well, supposedly. We don't know what Obi-Wan was doing five minutes before A New Hope started. Like, he could have been he could have been on a date with his girlfriend and then – Oh, true, true, true. R2-D2 and C-3PO <laughs> crash land on the planet. Like, oh, crap. Oh, there's a disturbance oh, in the force. Oh, 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 Did you feel is like <laughs> – but I still, I still, even though we know it's not true, I still wish Ray was Obi Wan Kenobi's granddaughter. That would have been so great, Kenobi's granddaughter and Anakin's grandson fighting side by side at the end of that would have been so great. But Kissing whatever them. they didn't, they didn't hashtag give it to Jeremiah, so I nope. didn't have any timing uh, saying that. But well. You probably could have helped it a little bit, but you know. Yep. Yeah, but, I don't, uh, it, it's an interesting question, but I like the way that he went with the character. He's like, he didn't want to show Vader right away. He wanted right. to only use Vader in certain scenes at certain parts because he his biggest thing was like, if we get Vader right away as a like main character, like if they replace like the way they use Tarkin with Vader or even the main guy with Vader. We're just gonna want to see Vader. Like we don't yeah. care about so anything he was, else. Like, very specific on the timing, uh, total time that yeah. Vader had on screen because he didn't want Vader to be a distraction, which makes though, sense. Which makes sense, and it's like because he wants and it to takes away from his chronic. big, and and it also takes away the big part of Vader. Like what Vader does in this film is so amazing, especially that end scene. Like that end scene's like. I think one of my favorite parts in all Star Wars. Right. That moment could be overshadowed by him just being in the film the whole time. And so like it, it for me when it, when he broke that down, it did make a little bit of a concern for me as a viewer of Star Wars and what they're going to do with Kenobi because I don't necessarily want Vader to overshadow the whole right. Kenobi show. Like, there's cuz there's six episodes of the Kenobi series and I think we've Heard that we're not going to get Vader until the last half, the second yeah. half, which is good because it, like. But is the second half episode three, like four, five, six? It's, is I that think what we're assuming, or are we? That's what they've said. That, like he's not going to show up till episode four. Okay, because it would be kind of interesting if we get him like episode three, and the first two episodes are one day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like well, <laughs> it is what it is, but like, I, yeah. I think. The delaying Vader in that show <laughs> is going to make it better when he is revealed or shows up. Yeah. Because, like, we're anticipating it. We know it's going to happen. It's going to make the hype real, for sure. Right. Like, you're on so. edge waiting for you to see him. And I also hope – I mean, I bet you we will see Vader without a helmet on at some point. Well, right, because it's Hayden Christensen. Yeah, so, so I want to see that a like, lot, honestly, we're not more than get with him on. And or voice – like it's no, there's no point. Like yeah, well, because we bring Hayden back. I think he's gonna get his helmet like knocked destroyed. off or destroyed against Kenobi, and it's gonna just gonna be be like a conversation. But like, um, I don't know. If, like the fact that you're bringing Hayden Christensen back goes to show that you're gonna see Hayden Christensen in the film. Correct, because 
he, there's no way he is doing the voice of Vader once Vader oh, right. has his helmet on. Isn't I? They have to bring back the gold for that, right? I think so. But they're they're pretty technology for like deep faking voices is very good too. And so, well, like, I mean, Vader has said every word possible at this point, probably, and they're able to just cut just whatever saying, they want. Th- but they have deep faking technology for voices, so you can yeah sound exactly like Morgan Freeman, like if you wanted to, or yeah someone else. So it's like. Should I just do that for the podcast? Get that thing and I'll no. sound like Morgan Freeman the entire time? No. People come to listen to you and me and Andrew. And our voices, not and Morgan voices. Freeman. Our very soothing <laughs> voices. But. And then also just from the same segment of The Empire, the camera test with Vader was cool. Yeah. When they brought the person in the Vader costume attire mm-hmm. and they're doing concept shooting for him and gareth edwards is like this is the coolest day it's like the best day of my life to seeing real life vader on stage in the costume because like no one has worn that costume professionally like that since hating did it in episode three yeah and so it's like he's the most iconic villain in all of storytelling it seems like and so to see him on set in his full garb that's pretty pretty cool yeah and i thought um what the actor critic said he said when you think of star wars you can do one image and you know that you're watching or looking at a star wars image and it's like this this portrait like the side portrait of vader's helmet like just that outline shape it could be completely black image but you know that that's star wars like you know that Like, even if you've never seen Star Wars, you can recognize Vader. He's one of those characters. We talked about this before in the um, podcast. But, like, he's one of those characters that you're like, all right, that's Star Wars. I've I've never seen Star Wars before in my life. I don't know anything about Star Wars, but I know that's Star Wars. That's Star Vader. There's certain characters like that, like R2 and C-3PO, like, and even probably Chewie. You see those characters, and you know exactly what they are, what they're from, their name, and you could potentially have never even seen Star Wars. which. I mean, it shows you how powerful Star Wars is in the world, but yeah. All right, so that was The Empire. Next up is called The Creature Shop, (laughs) and it's just a really quick one about just them designing all the creatures, all the different creatures and aliens and the animatronics of that. Um, And so it's like there wasn't really a lot there, uh, in this segment, um, but there's a ton of characters that I don't even remember from the show. So it's like, man, I want to watch it just so I can look in the background and see all these uh, creatures that they create. Because I didn't realize how many of them were practical and how, like, they're all animatronic c- controlled appendages and facial features and stuff. And, you know, they could have just, you know, just made them some rubber face and this had on a guy in the background but Mm -hmm. they put the detail in it to make a mechanical face that moved the way they wanted to it so it could give the person uh like the personality of that species in a sense like with like a tentacles moving or the detail is so ridiculous on these right and i didn't even realize that admiral radis the Mm -hmm. the main guy at directing the battle of scarif I, i didn't realize that his like uh talking movement was animatronic i thought that was just like cgi yeah no and they went all real. out so i still think it it looked kind of weird <laughs> the way he talked puppety well it's not just as puppety it's just like that facial structure shouldn't move like that i don't know i always think it was like kind of weird the way he talked but mm. i guess that's just how aliens are, I guess. You can't, we don't know what aliens actually talk like because we've never seen one mm-hmm. that we know of. Ooh, as I take off my face. Oh, gosh. This. What would you do if I just did that right now? And just, that would make I us would, go viral, right? We'd all. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, we get, we had better. a million subscribers by the end of the week. Well, but, and it'd be one of those things where I'm like, why didn't you do this a long time ago? But, you know. <laughs> 
it's kind of like with the Vader thing. You didn't want to like give it away right away because then everybody would want to get it. We gotta have some a lot of content first, and then do it. But um, but like the main one of the other main species like creature characters that they focused on was the creature Pow. Um, is it? I think is that the one that has like the really really long name that David from Discord always likes to name drop when he can like it's like yeah i think so 40 letters long is his actual name but mm-hmm. they just call him pow in the thing but like That's he's so the cool. one with the really big wide mouth with the squinty eyes and i don't know i kind of like that character more after they kind of like broke him down he's just a cool little little guy that like because like he says they have really tiny eyes but he has like the biggest mouth in star wars mm-hmm. and so I was just kind of funny how they they came up with that idea to do that, but um, yeah. Anything else from Creature Shop, Drew? No, I mean the animatronic stuff and all that stuff is so cool. It's kind of hard to. It was a longer one. It was like six minutes, but like I don't know. They it went by pretty quick. It went by really quick, and the, the biggest thing was like. There's like you were talking about like there were some characters that once they were complete he was like they can't just be background characters anymore like I have to show them doing more important things throughout right. like the fight and stuff and the biggest thing is like you saw like right away when they're doing it like the costume department started at three a.m. and sometimes they did twelve hour days but they were getting ready at three a.m. to do the war scene and like it's they're wearing those costumes like literally all day and yeah. it's so much work and or the guy with like the big forehead and all like the layers and stuff that was all painted on and stuff like imagine sitting in that paint and that stuff all day i mean i would do it so that because you're in star wars but yeah i didn't realize that that big dude was like a half robot character either the all white one what do you mean half robot? Well, like, his whole head is all animatronic. Oh. But, like, he was a guy walking in the suit, but then everything else was, like, straight up. I don't know. I want to know more about that character. I want to, like, have, like, a... They need to do... There's probably comics about him. Probably. <laughs> but it's just a, he's an interesting-looking character. Like, a big, long-haired, furry guy. All white. I just wonder, like, where his... Planet coming like are they a based on a snow planet or is that just too too presumptuous? But I don't know. It'd be hard to keep all that white fur pretty clean though. Tell you. Yep. All right, so that's Creature Shop. Next one uh, is called Rogue Connections, and this was just kind of like this boom, boom, boom. Like here's this in a movie. Here's an Easter egg about it. Like, mm-hmm. and here's the connection. I'm like, I don't know. Some of them were interesting, like, but like, it was very forgettable. Like, I can't even, I don't even remember any of them. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Can you, can you even th- remember any of them off the top of your head? What? Exactly. <laughs> any of the connection Easter eggs that they said? Well, the Hera Sedula. Oh, yeah, they did. I did didn't. That one. I honestly forgot that that was like a drop. I mean, I, I can pu- I'm pulling it up right now. Like the Hera one, the uh, the first scene of that robot on that planet is the same people that did our or BB-8. They designed that robot. They, oh, and then the the BB-8. truck, the truck from the truck was the first from, one from from Kashyyyk on ep- in episode three. Yup, the oh, only that's truck in that, Star Wars that, that has a, wheels. Yeah, one of the few that has wheels. But it, it's interesting that the that's probably the only vehicle left over from the Clone Wars that the Empire still uses, which is interesting. So that's pretty cool. Because anything connected to Clone Wars is great because Clone Wars is amazing. But um, yeah, so if you just want to see some little Easter eggs here and there, which they, they could have done, they even mentioned there's, there's so many more. Like, there's a lot of Easter eggs in Rogue One that they didn't even mention. 
Yeah, like, they mention like the guys from A New Hope, obviously. We saw yeah. the um the uh what's that droid from the Imperial probe droid, they mentioned that. Yeah. They what else did they mention? They mentioned how they're playing uh that one game that uh, the, the Jarek. Yeah. The Jarek. They yep. they mentioned that they showed it like the physical version of it, which I never even caught on to that. That was kinda cool. The Hera thing, like I said, I forgot about that. Um the voice of the guy was one of the directors when he called oh, yeah, into this. Random voices from Oh, the, the biggest one that I was saying earlier is that the guys that shot the laser of the Death Star Oh, it was, was Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson was one of the guys. Probably the only thing he's done right in his whole life was he I'm just kidding. That's killed a little aggressive. Thousands and thousands of people in a scene by pushing shot the button. Up. You pushed a button. <laughs> just kidding. That was a little aggressive. I'm sorry. But yeah, I thought that was kind of weird that they like Dude, what's her name? Loves Ryan Johnson. Kathleen Kennedy, your girlfriend. I don't want to say her name, but yeah, she loves Ryan Johnson so much. So aggressive, but I love that they mentioned that, but they probably wouldn't mention that if they realized the outcome of that movie. <laughs> well, right, because I think a lot of these documentary things came out before. Came out before because most came of them are probably on of, the DVD. Yeah, some releases. of them are probably on a Blu-ray set, and mm-hmm. so it probably came out. You know, six months after the movie, so this is like summer of 2017 yeah. that these were released. So this is before people hated episode eight, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So that is Rogue Connection. And the last mm-hmm. one is just epilogue, and it was just kind of them watching the movie. After well, it's, it's just them on the red carpet before all everyone showing up in like costumes and uh, just other character actors and actresses from other movies that showed up to the red carpet and all that jazz. And it's just kind of like the hype of this anticipated story that it's rogue one, I think is the perfect way to do a prequel to anything where it's, it's a standalone story, but it adds so much. It has new characters that have stakes. Cause you don't, if you take, bunch of characters from a new hope and put it in there you're not gonna care about them but it's i think it's just a perfect prequel and that's why it's one of the reasons why it's my favorite star wars movie is because it's i think it's perfect in every way i have like no real criticisms the only thing that i wish they did a segment on was the music because michael giacchino is like my favorite film composer or one of them mm-hmm. and He's the first one to do a Star Wars movie who wasn't John Williams. Like, John Williams did every single Star Wars movie, and he was the first one tasked with uh, taking on a Star Wars movie. And the soundtrack to Rogue One is amazing. Like, I. They don't mention all the other ones yet? Or did you watch all of them already? The other ones are just character ones. Oh. So. That's sad then. So I'm surprised they don't. I'm sure there's stuff on. YouTube of him talking about it, but like um, the musical breakdown, like, okay, I've only listened to one episode of Rebel Force Radio and it's when they did the breakdown of the Rogue One soundtrack and how like the main, one of the main themes Mm -hmm. is actually stolen from John Williams and you don't even realize it. It's, it's from uh, right after um r2d2 plays the leia message to, oh yeah to them like right after that plays and obi-wan's like i need you to come with me to alderaan or whatever you hear the the a little theme that pops up just really quickly and michael get you know took that theme those few little notes and made that into the main theme in rogue in one. rogue one and how it's like the hope theme where like mm-hmm. it's talking about hope in that scene. And then every single time it's about hope in rogue one, that same theme is played as a motif. And I think it's 
great. And so Michael Giacchino is great. I've been a fan of him ever since I was like in middle school. Yeah. Because he did the soundtracks to the OG Medal of Honor games. Shout out to that series back in the day. World War II game back then. So, and he's done stuff like some Pixar films. He's done a bunch of Pixar films. He does other Marvel movies. He's done like new Spider-Man movies. He does the soundtracks to that. So he took oh, that's the, sweet. So he took the Spider-Man theme from like dun, 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 that song. Like he, he made it like an orchestral soundtrack theme. That, yeah. Like, he's, so he's good at stealing other people's ideas and making them better. <laughs> but yeah, I wish they had something like that. So, but yeah, that's the first half of our Rogue One behind the scenes breakdown. Yeah. Um. They're fun. There's little quick little things, so it's like nothing like you're not gonna watch like an hour long documentary. But watching yeah. all of these plus the ones we'll be doing in part two is probably I don't know hour hour and a half of stuff maybe I don't know I didn't even probably just it's not, not even that long. I watched all it together. all today when I was trying to pack. Remember, you got to roll roll your shirts. Don't oh, I know them. military style. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Rogue I liked one. it. If you guys haven't seen it, go. We encourage you guys to go watch those and watch more breakdowns on all the other stuff that we do and or all the other like movies and stuff. Like, I I haven't really explored that side of Star Wars in a while or even at all. And I mean, I have this whole display just for Rogue One. I totally forgot about that. But yeah, yeah I don't, it's one of my favorite movies for me. It made. My favorite movie is Star Wars: A New Hope. It made it even it made it so so much a better movie because of this movie. So it's really hard for it not to be my favorite movie, but it's definitely in my top five or top yeah top five Star Wars movies of all time. Top, top eleven of all time. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So, well, before we jump into everyone's favorite time, yeah, we might as well just quick here a word from everyone's favorite sponsor of empire radio wesley angie's coffee and tea so when you're watching these uh little documentary things on rogue one you can get a cup of coffee or tea from wesley andrews and watch away and it would be a great time so let's listen to a word from our friend andrew Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to wesleyandrews.cc, use the code Empire Radio, that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout, to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Do it. Well, let's uh, quick transition over to voicemail time. So let's hear a little quick little word from Drew. <laughs> Yep, everyone's favorite time. So, we have, sure. let's see, got to make sure that I got all these voice, because I got messed up with uploading all these voicemails, so hopefully we got plenty of room, but, um, so we have- Hopefully they're in the right order. Right order. I screwed it up multiple times getting this set up, so hopefully I got this right, but uh, we got one from Jerrica, we got a behind the scenes from Lucy, and then we got- Seven, I think seven, eight, seven, um, VCU submissions. And so, uh, the plot, I think it's, I'm not saying it's a down week, but it's definitely, you know, 
a lot of build up for the coming finale because supposedly the finale is next week. But supposedly, allegedly. Supposedly, but I feel like a lot could still happen. So I'm not saying it has to be done by next week. We can p- push it out for a couple more weeks, but it definitely has to be done before the Kenobi series because that's going to be two hour long episodes plus voicemails. And we always add an hour for <laughs> this VCU stuff. So yeah, uh, we need this done before the Kenobi series. But anyway, let's hear a voicemail from Jerrica. She has uh, a quick little question for us. So let's take a look. Hey, Amp Radio. This is Jerrica popping in with another question. Um, what is your favorite kind of candy? I'm currently eating a bag of sour gummy worms. I think, yeah, they're watermelon. And they're pretty good, but I'm also a big sucker for chocolate. Um, let me know what you guys think, and may the force be with you. A big sucker for chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder if she meant to say that. But, uh, <laughs> Drew, what is your favorite kind of candy? So and we should for, say, what don't you? What do you not like for candy? Also, that's a good. Ooh, that, that too. might take a while. Um, what's, what's your favorite? All right, my favorite kind. Can I can I list my? Okay, I'm gonna list my favorite chocolate kind of candy. Okay. Favorite candy. And Just Sam, favorite, let's go. <laughs> all right. So, favorite candy probably Sour Patch Kids. I love Sour Patch Kids really? a lot. Yeah, they're like my go to um it, it i die but yeah um every time i eat them because it's sour but i do love sour patch kids reese's reese's pieces anything reese's i like the actually my favorite one is the double stuffed reese's where it's like literally the reese's cup is like so fat because it's just all I, peanut I thought butter. your favorite was the the egg the eggs are really good don't get me wrong i do like the eggs but I still like the double stuff because the double stuff I get year round, but the holiday Reese's are still the best versions. Yes. The egg or the, what's the tree or the, um, the Halloween pumpkin. Those are the best versions, but because I can't get those year round, I do really, really love the double stuff Reese's. And then for suckers, I really like the mango chili suckers. So like, the Asian ones, or the not Asian one, the Mexican ones that have like they're spicy, and then you get oh, the, the mango part. Those. those are the best, bro. They're they're the best. So yeah, those are my three three favorite. My least favorite, I don't know. I'm not super picky when it comes to candy. That would, that would be hard. I don't know what my least favorite candy. But... How do you feel actually? About wait, what? A coconut stuff in candy. Yeah, I don't mind it in candy. Oh, I, I, I don't like coconut in general, but in candy or even like the Girl Scout cookies, the coconut ones, I those are my favorite it. ones. I hate those. They're what? So those are the best. No. The caramel ones? No. Um, I don't know what my my least favorite candy. Alright, come back to me on that. Maybe I'll think while you're telling me. Right. Well I don't know. I really like Peanut M and M's. Those I can just eat all day long. Um, so it's like you know Reese's are really good because I like peanut butter and chocolate. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like um, like hard candy like Jolly Ranchers. Oh, like, I, I don't love Jolly Ranchers. Like I don't like eating candy where I feel like when I'm done eating it, my teeth are have a coating of sugar <laughs> over them. That's fair. Like, like I, Sour I Patch Kids. <laughs> like, like a Jolly Rancher, if I like eat a Jolly, I, when I'm done, I just feel like my teeth are just covered. Do you like Laffy Taffy? No, I I don't like. Like if it's like good, like saltwater taffy, that's like softer. Mm. Like those are good, but like a lot of those chewy stuff, I don't like it because it's like. I'm like, come on, let's, let's get to the point. Like, <laughs> it just takes too, it takes too long to eat. Yeah. Um, good chocolate's always good, like Dove chocolate. They have enough, but I, I, I want don't like. In it, though. I don't I just... like nuts. Okay, okay, this is kind of like my favorite one is peanut M and M. Like but, what? But I don't what? like chocolate with like almonds in it or like whatever like that. So it's 
like milk chocolate. I don't dark chocolates. I don't get it. Like I don't. That's the only chocolate that's good for your body. <laughs> it's the dark one. <laughs> it's all the Alleged. same. Allegedly, you take dark chocolate, add milk to it. You have milk chocolate. Like it's the same thing. Like I don't get why people say it's healthier. So it's just healthier because it has doesn't have sugar in it. I don't know. It doesn't have milk in it. <laughs> but um I honestly the more I think about my least favorite candy, like a candy that I would like, uh, I'm good, I'm not gonna eat it, is honestly Jeremiah peanut M Ms. Cause I I'm like really? you, I don't like nuts in it, and I think they're just not I like the M Ms with peanut butter, but I don't like the Reese's pieces well we reese's pieces but they have like a peanut butter version of m&m's now i think right reese's uh, right but like yeah i just don't like the crunchy like i don't want m&m's but see, the thing is like with, a peanut m&m is like a chocolate covered peanut that's what i think of it as whereas it's true like a chocolate bar with almonds in like, it like, like that's a chocolate bar like with a, almonds in it so it's like it doesn't i don't like that but so do it's you, like the Snickers have peanuts in it. Yeah, in my, Snickers yeah. are good. I like Snickers. Snickers are good. Milky Ways are good. Left Twix, not right Twix. Let's be real. Right? What's that? I don't. I don't. The know right Twix is. and left Twix. Oh, stop! Yes, I know. Yeah, I. Yeah. It's always about the left Twix. The right one. Can um, take a hike. It. Kit Kats are good. What's the like, the three? Pe- Three must be tears. You like those? Uh, I'll eat them. I'll, like, I like it, but it's I don't like know what it is. Or like so, the moon. Like, What's the moon one? Moon one. Moon. It's like dark. Uh, it has like t- it has like this weird like outer coating of chocolate, and then the inside's like fluffy. I don't know. I like those. I don't know. What about Charleston shoes? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Not moon pies chat. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Charles, no. You never heard sounds of those? Familiar. Sounds from It's like a long. Chewy... Oh, it's the one. It's the one from Friends that Joey had. I have no idea. No. Okay. Yes, yes. But like, I it know. sucks because like I've never had it. Chocolate covered chewy thing. But it's so but massive. The, the chocolate is so like soft and brittle that when you bite into the chewy part, it's like the chocolate just crumbles off. So it like makes a mess. Oh, but I've never had those. I'm trying to think, what's the candy that I don't really like? Want like Smarties? Yeah, they're fine. Oh, I know. Jer- Andrew's gonna hate me. What's that? The Halloween candy. Oh, the the grape gobstoppers. No, not yeah. those. I I I don't mind that as much because I don't mind hard candy. No, the Candy corn. No. Is it candy corn? Candy corn? Yeah, I like candy corn. Yeah, I hate candy corn. Really? Why? No. Oh, yeah, definitely. Milky the, Way. The, 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 pump, the pumpkin one. The pumpkin candy corn one. Oh. Top notch. Okay, I'm talking about Milky Way. Yes, Chad. Milky Way bar. You like Milky Way bars? Yeah, I like Milky Way. It's kind of like a three mustard tier, kind of. Kind of. All right. Well, thanks, Jerica, for the compelling question. We always yes. love those type of questions. All right. Next one is uh, the behind the scenes from Lucy. So let's take a listen to that. Hi, everyone. Lucy here with, you guessed it, a VCU behind the scenes. I'm working on my other voicemails, and gosh, things are getting heated for poor Dakai and me. I mean, most authors are cruel to their characters, but I'm just hacking away at peaceful life for Lucy as she knew it. Me, if you're listening in an alternate universe somewhere, sorry, not sorry for everything I'm putting you and your brother through. My Star Wars Club meeting was a success, and we decided to watch A New Hope next week. Now, hmm, with our club meetings being only an hour long, we wouldn't have time to finish the whole movie. In fact, I'd say during our second ever meeting, we'd only get through the first half of A New Hope. (laughs) Yes! Yeah, I lost Jeremiah's support over the past two sentences, but really, things are going great for us. In response to your request that me and Dakai team up, I will only say this. The Force has been working in mysterious ways. Thank you guys for another wizard episode, and may the Force be with you. (laughs) 
All right, Lucy, that's fun. Yep, the first half of a new hope. New hope. Yep, that's Bad. that sucks that you only can have an hour. I understand it's like a after school club thing, so you guess you can only can't go for a whole movie. Like yeah, that. but you could do the first and then the second. I, I, it's fine. I, I get it. I know how math works. Like I get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, make sure but I'm you glad have. You're starting with the best movie, in my opinion. Like, right? You should watch Rogue One first, and then watch um, New Hope. That makes more sense. But she won't be. Because she'll be having that meeting tomorrow uh, after recording this. So oh, she's not she going to hear this first. Live. And if she so, does, she doesn't chat. So. Right. So uh, have fun watching that. I hope you had fun. Make sure you have a bowl of candy with you to, to build the camaraderie between you and your your fellow Star Wars fans in your Comrades. club. Also tell them to come listen to Empire Radio. Yeah. We'll give your your group a shout out, whatever. Yeah, called. and oh, and if you, you want guys have a name, if if you need, yeah, what's the name of your club? First of yeah. all, um, but if you ever need a a celebrity appearance to talk about Star Wars, I'm available on Wednesdays if you want to zoom me in. Oh, <laughs> probably gotta get like, your a teacher to allow that because true. I don't want some teacher to walk into your room and mm-hmm. like everyone's watching this. Talking to old this guy, talking about 33, 32 year old guy on the screen in their room. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but because like, I think she said she has a teacher that kind of like heads, heads it or allows. Probably it. make sure they're not just doing drugs. And one, one of her, something. one of her teacher, I think, listens to the podcast. She got to listen. So, oh, thanks for listening, so, Mister oh. Teacher or Mrs. Teacher or whoever you may be. Teacher, but, but also, I, but yeah, I'll Jeremiah, if you want, Lucy, yeah. I can zoom in, zoom in for one of your meetings and we can talk about star wars and podcasting and stuff like that that would be cool because i'm i don't work on wednesdays normally so i have if you're meeting on wednesdays i'm free all right uh kind of, we could all hear you as a teacher but i could lecture yeah. some kids definitely <laughs> <laughs> um all right so we have Five voicemails from Brady slash Sarnotopius, who does multiple characters. And so, and then we have three from Lucy. And so, again, nothing is contradicted yet, really. Um, there's kind of, it's interesting because, okay, I don't want to explain anything until we listen, but like, Lucy brings something up in hers that kind of aligns with something that Brady submitted. And so I had to figure out which one I wanted to play first, Lucy's ones or Brady's. And so I'm going to go with Brady's because I think that would make more sense when it brings up the same person in Lucy's stuff. So let's hear. uh, So let's see, where did we leave off last week? So Boss Nass challenged Emperor Palpatine to a duel on Naboo because Naboo is where the secret base is for the resistance. Yes. Isn't it uh, in the core? No, it's just on Naboo. Oh, okay. Um, and Dakai is on his way to the unknown regions because he wanted to escape <laughs> to somewhere peaceful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unbeknownst to him, there is a gigantic war going on with the Gungans, the Chiss, the Resistance, the Empire. Everything's all going to crap there. Um, so he's stuck on a ship going in there. And the Chiss and the Resistance are working together. So that's where we left off last week. So let's hear a message from Valen Doss, who is was originally the Imperial Defector that joined the Resistance, but was an undercover spy for the Empire to find out information on Resistance. So let's hear a message from Valen Doss. This is Valen Doss. I, uh, I'm so conflicted right now. I don't know what to do. The Empire's been my life for so long, and yet being with these rebels, oh, it makes me see that uh, it makes me see that they're good people. Oh. I'm starting to see the, 
corruption of the empire. I can't just keep masking my deceit. Maybe I can, maybe I can do something. Maybe I can uh, tell Palpatine false information. I don't know. But then I'll die. No. No. I know what I have to do. And I know that I have the strength to do it. I'm going to visit with Boss Nass and try to fix this once and for all. Alright. So Valen Doss was a fake defector to be a mole, and now he's having second thoughts and he's becoming a defector maybe, or wanting to become a defector. And he doesn't want to lie to the Emperor because he doesn't want to die. And so he decides the best thing he can do is to seek out Boss Nass, who is leading the M- the the Grand Gungan army against the Chiss right now. So, that being said, let's hear a message recorded from the council chambers of the Gungans. So let's listen to that. <laughs> A big bombad general. How is the war going? Oh, it's a, it's a going good, Misa Boss. It's a going very good. It's a winning out in territories, and you, sir, oh, you, sir, gonna be in the power, and Misa gonna be your right hand man. Oh, big bombad Sith, Misa, so glad that you, sir, still in death. 17th brothership and coming home to Ota Gunga. We are gonna conquer the galaxy together. And we are gonna wait. Oh, we are having a visitor. We are not having a scheduled appointment. Bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. The Sith Gungan paid a visit to the to Boss Nass, and we hear also from reports that he's going to take over the galaxy. He's strong, he's admired, and all that jazz. So, but he gets interrupted, and someone's coming to visit him. Nothing was scheduled, so it's a surprise visit. So, let's hear a voicemail about Colonel Doss. Having a talk with Boss Nass. Who says this that nerves interrupt me? This, this big, he's an empire man in, in the uniform. Boss Nass, I come before you as a humble servant. I, I have a message for you. Ooh, a big bombad message. What is your name? I'm Colonel Aylin Dawson. I just, I beg of you, stop this conflict. You're going to die at the hands of the Empire if you do, and the Rebellion, they're going to crush you. No, I, I need you to join the New Republic. I need you to join forces with them. I, I, I feel so awful. I've been serving this evil entity my whole life, and I see now that the Rebellion is full of good people. Join them. Please, Boss Nass. All right. So, Valen Doss is pleading with Boss Nass to stop this conflict, join the resistance slash New Republic to fight against the Empire. So, this Valen Doss has kind of he switched sides are again. Again, <laughs> that boy's like, flippy floppy. Yep. So maybe next week he'll he'll be back with the Empire. I don't know. We'll see. But he's trying to recruit Boss Nass. He's trying to unite the Gungans with the the New Republic and the Resistance and ultimately the Chiss. But I don't know because the Gungans have been killing tons of Chiss. And so I don't know if the Chiss are going to be okay with them just flip-flopping. But that being said, let's hear a next the next uh, voicemail with Boss Nass and... 
the Gungan cyst. It's a no, he's a big boss, Nas. You sir, you sir, you sir, you sir, gonna rule the galaxy, and me sir, the Mr. Binks, gonna be your right hand man. No, you sir, you sir, strong, you sir, powerful, you sir, gonna be the big emperor, the boss of the galaxy. No, mm, you sir, just wanting the power, me sir, seeing through you. You sir, like all the rest of the sin. Mm. Me sir, like in this uh, villain glass. Me sir, hearing what you sir have to say, and you, Gungan Sith, be gone with you. <laughs> You sir, big nas. You sir, thinking you sir, so good. You sir, no seen the last of me, sir. You sir, no see it. All right. So boss, so the Sith was there talking to Boss Nas when Valen Das showed up, and so mm -hmm. the Sith hears what Valen Das said and like, no, don't listen to him. But Boss Nas is like, no, I like this Valen Das. He, I think he knows what he's talking about. And so he banishes the Sith. And the Sith is like, you haven't seen the last of me. So so we, we, we thought that the, the Sith guy was going to join the Gungans in the fight against the Chiss and everyone. But Boss Nass is like, nope, don't need you. And so it looks like the Gungans Dang. might be switching sides too. <laughs> All right, so then one last message about Boss Nass talking to Valen Das. Now, big, big boss Nas, I, I have to contact the Rebellion or the New Republic and tell them what's going on. Me so liking this idea, but me so still thinking that me so want to take on the big Papa Palpatine in a duel. Oh, but Boss Nass, we, we need your forces in the Outer Rim. We, we need them. There, so many people are dying. And the Rebels, they're on this base. I can contact them now and get them here. We can fortify Naboo for when the Imperial Armada comes. Oh, Misa thinking that you, sir, right. Misa keeping the Gungan forces out to fight Darth Daddy. <laughs> and Misa gonna fight the Papa Palps. Mm. Misa need a new help. Misa needed to know his strategies. And we are gonna win. <laughs> All right. So, even though Boss Nass is having a change of heart of things, he still wants to duel Emperor Palpatine, which he calls him... What do you call him? P -p 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 Papa Palps? Is that what he called him? I think so. Yeah, Daddy Palps, or who became Darth Daddy. Then yeah. you have <laughs> Poppy, whatever. I can't even. I get, there's too many P's and there's Pops. There's all and Pops and. <laughs> whatever. So there's still going to be a conflict. Looks like the Gungan forces are going to be redirected to Naboo because uh, last week Emperor Palpatine was like, I'm sending the entire Imperial Armada to Naboo to demolish the resistance. So, um, but, but, uh, boss Nass is waiting for old man Palpatine to show up so he can fight him. So, all right. So those are the ones from Brady slash Zarnotopius. So let's hear some voicemails from Lucy and some that gets a little juicy. So Ooh. let's listen to the first one from Lucy. Hello, Galaxy. My name is Lucy, and this is my retaliation to Palpatine's lies last week. You need to know that your so-called Emperor doesn't care about you. He tears apart families and burns cities to the ground every day because he wants power for himself. I lost my family because of what he did, but I am not going to let him take yours. Stand with the Resistance and give yourself a better life. Palpatine, you are never going to crush us. You can make 34 Death Stars and chase us through every system. You can kill us one by one, but you can never crush what we stand for. I know you can track my location through this broadcast, but I'll make it easier. 
We're going to Rentor to help our allies. Palpatine, I dare you to come after me. Send your assassins to eliminate my opposition. Send your fleet to attack us. Send your questionable Sith apprentice, but I am going to make you pay for taking away the person I cared about most in the universe. Try your hardest, but light will prevail. Lucy, out. Dang. Okay, Lucy. <laughs> so the first time I listened to this before we started... I laughed so loud when she was called questionable apprentice referring to daddy yeah. helps. <laughs> I, I laughed so hard. It was just the funniest thing. But Sorry, okay, Lucy... is the third just said in the chat. Ooh, that gave me chills. <laughs> Lucy is a little, uh, a little, uh, I'm like, calm down, Lucy. Maybe we should switch our name to resistance radio instead. Like, cause we don't want to get on Lucy's bad side. I know right? Lucy. Oh. She, she really, mm. Because that was, so I guess that was entitled a broadcast to the galaxy or something like that. So that's a message out to the galaxy telling everyone to stand up against the Empire and not to be afraid, basically. And Emperor Palpatine is like, you can come after us, but you're not going to stop us. So I guess I guess you need that kind of spirit in a yeah. <laughs> resistance. Um, but all right. So let's listen Jer- to Jerica in the chat said, Lucy has no chill. I love it. <laughs> and then she wrote hashtag give it to Lucy. <laughs> oh, that's funny that you say that because or that she says that because uh that image that we got. So someone sent us an image for the VCU, um, kind of like a title screen of like Yeah. And I shared so, it in our uh ID right. by the way. And so when you go to that person's post on their Instagram in the hashtag that says hashtag give it to Lucy. Oh, really? That's dope. <laughs> Let's start that trending now, dude. Yep. <laughs> so it was hashtag give it to Dave. Yeah. But maybe Which, we got changed to hashtag give it to Lucy. I mean, hashtag give it to Dave. I don't know. I feel like that's like the best we've ever done ever on this is creating that hashtag. But, you know. Yeah. But Lucy, everyone's. Loving you, so let's uh, yeah. listen to your second voicemail. So that was uh, uh, the broadcast to the galaxy, so let's listen to the next one. Hi, Monarchy Radio, or whatever you're called. <laughs> Dakai again. This has been a very tense ride to Rentor, but with the stormtroopers in this transport glaring at the Gungans, and the Gungans glaring at everyone else, and everyone else glaring at the stormtroopers. I've also gotten some weird looks from this guy who's wearing half of Darth Vader's outfit, but then again... <laughs> Most people give me weird looks when I wear my armor. We just came out of hyperspace and- Whoa, what in the galaxy is going on? There's a blockade of Gungan ships around the planet. There's some resistance ships trying to get to the Gungans and First Order ships trying to get to the resistance. There's also some small fleet of other alien ships scattered all over the place. I knew I shouldn't have come here. Oh, oh no, oh no. What is your supremium? That communication from the Resistance, it sounds like my sister. But she shouldn't be here. The whole reason for this trip was to get away from her. I'm not ready for this. I have to get out of here. Was that her brother? Yeah, that was that was Henry doing a a Gungan uh, voice, I believe. Um so so uh Dakai is on a transport to Rentor where the main battle is. And it's kind of funny because there's uh, Imperial Troopers, Stormtroopers, there's Gungans. Darth Daddy's in it because she's like this guy in this half Vader suit. (laughs) Mm Because that's what Darth Daddy described his uh, suit as. And so they're all on one ship, which is kind of funny. And they all arrive on this, to this battle. And then they hear a broadcast that she, from the last one, the broadcast, that it's she's there. She's on Rentor, and so the Kai knows that Lucy is there, and so mm-hmm. uh, every, all these stories are coming together. They're yeah. They're all they're all converging on Rentor, and so uh, one last voicemail from Lucy, and let's take a listen to that. Lucy here. I'm getting a lot of deja vu from the whole voicemailing while trying not to get hit by lasers in a battle against the First Order thing. But this time, we're also battling Gungans, and fighting next to Chiss. As you can probably tell, we made it to the surface, but so did everyone else. And we got stranded when our ship was damaged in the landing. But, as you know, I'm a typically optimistic person, so I'm feeling relatively okay-ish right now. 
Hey, where's Will? I haven't seen him in a while. Oh no, not this again. Do I have to show up and be the hero like last time? If he's messing around with that lightsaber, I swear I'm going to throw it <laughs> so far it'll land on the planet with the actual reign of Kamino. <laughs> Wait, everyone just stopped shooting. There's a clearing over there. I see Will, some Gungan, and that Thalius all on the ground with someone pointing two blasters at them. But that guy... No, it can't be. Colonel Doss, what are you doing? Uh-oh. Oh. What happened? So. This is where I, I'm... It's up for interpretation now. So, Valen Doss is on Rentor. And I think she was saying he is pointing blasters at Will and a couple other people, I think he, she said. And so I wonder what exactly this is. I don't think anything contradicted yet, but mm -mm. it looks like Valen Das, after he left his meeting with Boss Nass, went to Rentor and is doing something. And so I think, if I had to do my predictions, that he is uh, s intervening in some way to stop the fighting. On behalf of Boss Nass, maybe Boss Nass went with them, maybe, or a representative of Boss Nass went with him to kind of like tell or him to stop he, fighting. Or, or he maybe flip flopped again. Flip flopped. But I, I think. He realized that he was going to die if he didn't, if right, he wasn't but, still a bad guy. I'm so hopeful that Valen Doss arrived in a good manner. I, I'm not. I want him to be bad. You want to be bad still? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I think him going to Boss Nass was his official change of heart. And I think so, he tried and it failed, and so now he's going to be bad. Unless, like, Palpatine found out and, like, took his family hostage and is, like, making them Yeah. Kill. I guess we'll find out. I think it's kind of cool because neither of us actually know his outcome. If, yeah, it's just like we talked about. What kind of flip-flops. <laughs> So we don't know his out. We don't know Will. What is, Will? What are you doing? Like, yeah. first he gets locked up in prison, and then he he gets rescued, and he gets lost going to the bathroom, and then he's I, I feel like Will's left. Will's character in this is like C three PO's character, but he's like a com a comedic relief kind of. Yeah, like like he keeps like. Like, Next, everyone rolls his eye, our eyes at him when he's doing he things. He falls. And... He's he's like the slapstick comic yeah. relief so, of this story. And then, no and offense then he, to Will. And then you have, you know, Brady. He sends all these characters in, like that adds to the story, like all these different mm -hmm. elements. But Lucy's the one that takes this, these all everything and ties them together <laughs> in an actual story. <laughs> And so, Sardo Topia's the third. He said, "Will is the Jar Jar Banks of the VCU." <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure Will's still the chat too. I'm Jar Jar. Okay. <laughs> so that's where we're at with the VCU. So it seems like everybody's on Rentor now, mm -hmm. and but uh, Imperial Armada is still going to Naboo to fight where the Rebel base is, where boss Nass is waiting to fight Palpatine. And so now, so it's, it's boiled down everything. All these different storylines have now boiled down to two plot points, the Rentor stuff and the attack on Naboo and mm. boss Nass there. And so that's where it started. So it's the story is getting simpler and simpler now, more honed in. Um, but now it's like, because it's like that, it's more likely to, <laughs> create a uh contradiction if something happens um yeah. so we're really hoping this comes together uh hashtag give to lucy only she can do continue doing these for us dot 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 not really but <laughs> no um it'll come together the way it's supposed to be and yep. and honestly like this whole character development like did he flip-flop did he not well we're just go we're just joking. You're not the Jar Jar. I know that hurts your feelings, but we're we're just kidding around. We we love you over here. We love yep. what this story became, yep. and next week is potentially the finale. Yep. Um. So buckle and, in, and if not, 
then it's not. Maybe there's a part two. Maybe that's the finale of book one. Maybe we we'll don't. See. We don't know. We'll see. But, but yeah, know. but like we don't know exactly how. Like we said at the beginning of the episode, what our schedule is going to be in the next couple of weeks. So, um, there may or may not be a VCU next week. We don't know. We'll figure it out. Yes. Um, but but either way, still submit your VCU ideas. And if you are just mm-hmm. wanting to submit any voicemail, just a random uh, general one, you can do that too. And we'll always play them. So as long as they're family friendly, of course. Um, For sure. And, you know, my call is still going out to all of the fans out there who are artists. Continue coming up with ideas and draw things, paint things, mm-hmm. uh, CGI things, Lego seen them whatever you want and submit them like did we get any more yet or no no we just got the two the uh the one that i sent you and then the one the title screen one yeah so we have a title screen it looks super cool and then we got a really sick image of lucy and her brother but there's so much more to this story and maybe all you artists are waiting for the finale to like figure out which part you really do want to do and like what i need to do is like Okay, I keep meaning to start actually putting the voice you notes together. Start. I haven't even started. I'm oh, I'm so scared to like face. But I, by the end of this, we're probably gonna have over a hundred voicemails, so we'll need at least a hundred images. So maybe once I finally get everything together, when you it's can all tell done, them exactly. Which... I can like come up with like kind of like a, a spreadsheet of some sort, it's like a Google Docs yeah. thing, and so then I can post that. And people can see, okay, we need scenes for this, this, and this. And, and as they're sent in, I can, you know, X them off. Like, and well, so. even the image that we got is like an image of maybe the future. We don't even know what this, like, the image that we got is like, one, it's amazing. And um, we definitely encourage you to do more. You know who you are. But also, it's an image of something that we haven't actually heard yet, right? Right, but I did say last week, Lucy, I need you and Dakai to team up at some point because that's what Maybe. the image is. And yeah. so, um, or it's not teaming up per se, but Maybe, maybe they're just them best together friends at the in end. a scene. Like, there's something. Something right. happens with them. But, yes. So, if you want to submit something, um, you can send it to our fan email, which is empireradiofans at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're in the discord, you can just send it to me directly in a direct message. Um, if you're going to send it to us on Instagram, make sure you send us an actual file. Um, I did yes. message the one who sent us the title screen that just kind of posted on his Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, but send us an actual image file. Yeah. Um, that, that way I can actually download it and then use it. In... Um, yeah. Cause we, we do, we don't mind them going via on public yeah public. you can post them on your stuff if we you don't put mind. it on your own that's your art you can do whatever you want and if you do it that way like this last one i shared it in our story to promote you and stuff like that we we do that's fine the biggest thing is like if you want us to actually use that art you have to give us a file version of that art or yep. just send us the picture i mean we granted we could just screenshot it but we it'll be we better want to make sure if... that we have the quality and also your permission yeah. and i feel like the only way to do that is that you send it to us so for you for sure send it and for future people if you guys want to post it on your own social and tag us in it and we will repost it or share it or whatever on our social we're okay with that just if you want us to use it we have to get it or we're not going to use it because we don't have permission allegedly so um yeah but yeah, I really hope you guys come out for this. I think it's still the first image we got already. It's like if y'all don't come out, it's the best one, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but but, right. but like it's already like it could be potentially the already the top five images. Like right, like and I would wear this on a t shirt. Like that's how good it is. So I I will say um, maybe just for those of you ha- who haven't started yet. Um, if you could send it to us like in like a YouTube video format, so like the 1920 by 1080 or something like mm-hmm. that, just so it can fill the whole screen. Cause like, um, obviously if it's not like a 
full screen image I, i'll just put like a background behind it or yeah or zoom in a little bit or something. something but it'd be nice if it was like a full thing uh it doesn't have to be it's mm-hmm. your art you you can do whatever you want we'll yeah make it sure work. because i mean the one that we got it's not but it also is like perfect for like a frame or like a front of a t-shirt or the back of a t-shirt or something like that so yeah honestly yeah. it's really up to you but if it's you up want, to you but like, it would help it'd be nice it'll be bit. look it'll look better if it's the full screen on the youtube thing just mm-hmm. a full image rather than me putting in a background to kind of fill in space or something like that but yeah. it doesn't matter just just a little tip um but anyway since we're kind of already talking about it, we can just jump into our socials um go to links.co slash empire radio links with two eyes and that's a landing page for all of our things for youtube instagram uh facebook the discord link um mm-hmm. and also a link to needlessly nerdy.com which we are a part of and other things on there as well. And then, like I said earlier, our fan email is empireradiofans at gmail.com. And so that's open to anyone to send us anything, which is an easy way to get in contact with us as a fan yep. thing. So um, that's all we have for tonight. Anything else, Drew? No, I, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is tune in to ICCC Cons YouTube or Instagram. Um, I'll try to get it so that they're posted in the links. Um, maybe for sure on a, the YouTube, we'll p- put a post in the links. But And we'll, we'll make sure, like, the biggest thing is, if you haven't already, go to our, I, go to our Instagram um, or join the Discord. There'll be links to it when it happens on both we're going to probably have Tanner do that part and he's going to post them on our discord and also on our IG so that people know that we are live. It's me and Andrew. We're going to do a podcast um, about the con at the con and we're super excited and hopefully wish us luck. Like hopefully we get some really cool experiences and we can meet certain people and yeah, we're really yeah, excited for this event. You'll be so. vlogging it up too. So yeah, a lot of vlogging. And so you know, I don't know when that video is going to come out. Sometime next videos month. every videos. day is going to. There's at least three days of vlogs, and then maybe even a day going and a day coming back. I don't know. I bought a bunch of SD cards, bought a new <laughs> camera stand, I bought a mic for my camera i'm going all out on it and that's from me and andrew's like i'm gonna film you the whole time you don't even need to bring any of that stuff and i'm like no definitely we'll we'll the, we're, we're all gonna do it so so there'll definitely be hours of vlog time and because Correct. i'm not filming it i don't gotta put it together so <laughs> true so drew and andrew will have fun editing a lot of things and i i'm excited to see all that Stuff yeah, it's going to be down. fun. So if you guys aren't able to make it to ICC Con this year in Nashville, um, you will be through YouTube. So make sure you go to our YouTube, go subscribe, hit that bell icon so that you know when these vlogs go live. And also our podcast video version, if you haven't watched this video version, yeah. Jeremiah has done an amazing job over there. So you want to at least go and just thumbs up all the videos for fun. Like, just yeah. go do that. And subscribe if you, you like. Come on, yeah. guys. Like, yeah. I mean, if you listen and you like it on your Spotify or your iTunes, that's fine. But you want to just jump on our YouTube real quick, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and just go back and listen to it the way you listen to it. But you can, yeah, just help us out. It goes a long way, and we appreciate it from you guys. And you guys are are the best fans. Granted, yep. they're you guys are our our only fans, but we still <laughs> think you guys are the best. So. Yep. Shout out to you guys. And like I said, uh, if you are going to ICC Con, make sure you come and find me or Andrew or Tanner. We'll be walking around with Empire Radio shirts pretty much the whole time because we want to make sure what everyone are you wearing right knows. Now? What are you wearing right now? Empire Radio shirt. But anyways, we want to make sure that people know that it's us. So we're going to be walking around. And um, yeah, come say hi to us. Come take photos. Do all this stuff, even hang out with us. And if there's not a lot of you, we'll go out, eat together, whatever. Are you, we'll, you going to sign autographs too? I mean, if you want us, that's kind of weird for me, but yeah, I'll, I, I will <laughs> if you yeah. want me to, I guess. Order, <laughs> order some Wesley Andrews coffee and he'll sign the coffee bag for you. How about that? Hey, I've always said that. If you guys do order the Savior from Empire Radio, I can sign you. I'm going to buy some more stickers soon and just give them 
I'll wait to you guys too if you order from Wesley. All right, cool. But yeah, that's oh, it. Wish that's me luck it. tomorrow, you guys. I'm gonna be flying on an airplane by the time you probably watch this on YouTube. But right, yeah. All right, cool. So you have been listening to another rogue tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And may the force be with you. Always.